Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to set up a trusted location for your databases so you don't see those annoying security warnings, whether or not you actually have the full version of Access installed. Today we've got two questions. The first one is from Gavin in Detroit, Michigan, one of my Platinum members. And later on, we'll be hearing from Connor in Galway, Ireland. But first, Gavin says, I routinely get database file updates from my home office. Whenever I download a new file, I get a yellow bar across the top of the screen that gives me a security warning, and nothing in the database works. I can click to enable the content, but that's annoying to have to do it every time. Is there a way to disable that? So here's what's happening to Gavin. Gavin is downloading a new file from his home office's website. Let's assume it's in his downloads folder. And if you open up this database file, you get the security warning up here. It says active content has been disabled. And if you click on any of the buttons in here, nothing seems to work because all the VBA has been disabled. Now, this is something that Microsoft does to protect you in case you download a database file from a disreputable website or someone emails it to you. Unless you put it in a trusted folder, a trusted location, or you manually click to enable the content, then everything in this database will be disabled. Now, I just enabled it, so as you can see, it's not working. But that is annoying to do every time you download something. So what you can do is you can set up a trusted folder. Now, I don't recommend trusting your downloads folder just in case, but you can make a trusted folder pretty much anywhere you want, like right on your desktop. So let me close this. And right over here on my desktop, I'll make a new folder and we'll call this Rick's trusted folder. Okay, how do we set this up so it is now trusted? Well, open up access and go into options, trust center, trust center settings, trusted locations and now come down to add new location browse to wherever it is this one's on my desktop and then rick's trusted folder come down to okay now if you want to make subfolders of this location trusted also that's fine if you want to have different folders underneath this one hit okay now you'll see it's in your trusted folder list hit okay again okay one more time now close access. Now I'm going to delete this one and go download a fresh copy off my website. So I downloaded a fresh copy. Let me open this up just to make sure. Yep, it's not trusted. Okay, so close that. Now all we got to do is just take this guy and move it over here into Rick's trusted folder. And now if I open this up and run it from here, notice there's no warning message. Okay, so set yourself up a trusted folder. Only put things in your trusted folder that you absolutely trust. If it comes from my website, you know you can trust it. I check everything, and I'm the only one that can upload stuff. If you want to learn more about trusted folders, I cover that in my Access Beginner Level 2 class. I show you almost right away how you can get in there and set up a trusted folder and talk about some other stuff, too. Okay, now for part two. Now, this is for more advanced users. This one's from Connor in Galway, Ireland. Connor is a Platinum member. He's also one of my developer students. He says, I built my database following your videos, and everything works great. I set up a bunch of users on my network with a split database using the runtime edition of Access. They are getting the Microsoft Access security notice every time they open up the database. How can I get rid of that on their PC since they don't have the full version of Office? Okay, so a little background for everybody else. If you want to distribute your database onto multiple computers in your office, and it's for people who don't necessarily need to design the database. They just want to be able to run it, right? You build it, they work with it. You don't have to purchase full copies of Microsoft Office for all of those users. You can use something called the Runtime Edition. I got a whole video that explains how to download it, install it, and set it up on your systems. And what you do in those cases is you split your database. So you've got front-end and back-end files, right? The front-end's got all the forms and reports and stuff like that in it. And the back end has all the data and the tables. All right, once you split it, you encrypt their front end copy so they can't mess with it. You point them to the back end and everything works just fine. They can use it for free and they can't mess with the database. So I've got all these videos here that explain how to set all that up. 
The problem is they don't have the full version of access on their machine, so they can't open up the trust center and set up a trusted location. And every time they run the database, they'll get this warning. It's the Microsoft Access Security Notice. And if you're okay with them being a little annoyed, just have them hit open and look, they can continue working like nothing ever happened. But if you want to get rid of that security notice and still use the runtime, I'll show you how to do it. Now, in order to do this, you have to edit the Windows registry. There's a key that you can put in the Windows registry in a specific spot that I'm going to tell you in just a minute where you can tell Access what your trusted folder is. I'm going to warn you, back up everything. Back up your database, back up Windows. Do a full system backup of your computer. Because if you edit the registry and mess things up, you can make your computer not bootable. So be very careful with what you're doing. I don't want any emails from someone who said they messed up their computer with what I showed you. I'm going to show you something that's very simple as long as you do it right. But please, before you do this, back up everything. Okay, you've been warned. Now, in case you don't know what the Windows registry is, it's basically a database that Windows uses for all of your settings for your system and all the different software applications that are installed in Windows will, will look to the registry for their settings information. And there's a specific registry key right here. It's H key current user. That's for the current user logged on. Microsoft Office 16.0. That's, that's Access uh, 2019, 365, right? Access, security, trusted locations. And then in the trusted locations folder, there's a whole bunch of keys in here. Each one of these represents a different location. All right, this one, for example, is my server database. So you have to add your own custom location using the registry in order to bypass that security warning when access starts up. And I'm going to show you how to do it. Before we do this, what are we doing again? We're backing up everything. Do a full system backup before you start messing with the registry, especially if this is your first time using the registry editor. All right, come down to your start button. We're going to look for reg, R-E-G, edit, the registry editor. Open that guy up. You will get the Windows permissions pop up that says, hey, you have to have administrative rights to do this. Are you sure? Say yes. Then this guy loads up. This is the registry editor. Now, I'm not going to do a full class on how to use the registry. This is just real quick to get access working, right? But we're going to open up H key current user, then software, then Microsoft. Scroll down, there's a lot of them. Where's Office? There's Office. All right, under Office, you're going to go to 16.0. That's the most recent version right now. This is Access 2019 or 365. All right, then Access, then Security, then Trusted Locations. Now, me, I've got a bunch of them set up on this computer because I've got the full version of Access, so I have them set up in my Trusted Locations under there. Each one of these locations represents a different folder. You can see here there's that one, right? There's G My Drive. All right, there's my C Users Amicron Desktop. That's my desktop folder. So all you really have to do is create a new key under here, give it any name you want to, and then create a key under that called Path. All right, so go to Trusted Locations, right-click, New, Key. Call this whatever you want, Rick's Database. Okay. Now over here on the right, you're going to right-click, go to New, String value, and you're going to call this path, P-A-T-H. It's got to be exactly that, path. Now open that up by double-clicking on it and put in here the folder that you want to make your trusted location. I'll put in here C colon backslash test database. Backslash. Always end it with a backslash. All right, C colon backslash test database. That doesn't exist, but I'll add it in a second, right? Hit OK. So there it is. I've got a trusted location, right, called Rick's Database. That name's kind of meaningless. And the path is Test Database. There are other things you can put in here, too, like the Allow Subfolders value, the date, a description if you want. But you don't need all that stuff. That's all you need is just the path. Okay? Now, these changes in the registry take place immediately. You don't have to reboot or you don't have to close this or restart, whatever. Let's go make this Test Database folder. All right, here I am on my C drive. Right-click, New folder test database all right so this should be a trusted folder now okay 
Let me go download another copy of that database. All right, now when I open this up, it's in a trusted folder and notice I don't get any security warnings. Okay. Here's another database that I have set up on my Access Database Cloud. I recently teamed up with Access Database Cloud to provide online access hosting for your databases. If you want to learn more, check out this webpage. I'll put a link down below. But anyways, I've got a shared database set up here. Here's the front end and the back end is in a shared folder right there. All right, there's the shared folder. We don't need to worry about this guy. What we need to know is the location of this file because this is what we have to put inside of our trust locations. So this guy's sitting on the desktop. How do we find the desktop? We'll go to C and it's gonna be under users. The user name, this is user one, the account you're on, desktop, all right? There's the path right there. Click there, it's C, users, user.1, desktop. Copy that to your clipboard. All right, wherever that database is running out of, that's where you gotta put that trusted location in. All right, the back end, as long as you're just pulling data off the tables there, you don't have to put that in the trust center. So now let's go to the registry editor, reg, edit, there it is. All right, there's that warning message. I couldn't show it to you before because on my local PC, it, it stops my video recorder, but I'll hit yes. Okay, here we are. I was playing around with it earlier, so I'm right there. H key current user software, Microsoft Office, blah, 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 trusted locations. All right, there's that location two is the default that's always set up. We're gonna click on trusted locations right here. Right click, new key. We're gonna call it whatever you want, Rick's. DB, whatever, whatever, whatever you want to name it. Just, just be nice. Don't name it anything nasty. In case your mom might see it. All right. So in here, right click, new, string value. What do we got to call it? Path. It's got to be called path. All right. Double click. And then paste in that folder and put a backslash on the end of it. And then hit OK. All right. Now these changes take place immediately, so you don't got to worry about it. But we can close that. We're done with it. We can close that too. And now when I run my database, voila, no security warning. See that? One little registry edit and you can do all that stuff and it works perfectly. Now the downside is you do have to do this on every machine or every instance of your cloud server, depending on what you're doing. If you're in a LAN, you're on a, a local network, you gotta go around everyone's computers and set it up that way. But once you make that edit, you won't have to worry about it ever again in the future, unless of course you replace the machine. But Rick, you say, there has to be an easier way than going around to every machine and going into the registry editor and typing in all this information. There's gotta be an easier way to do it. Well, of course there is. We can use our good friend VBA to do this for us. With just a couple of lines of code, we can make a button. So when the users themselves open up the database for the first time, they just click on the button and it adds that registry key and then they don't have to worry about it anymore. You can even program it to be automatic if you want to. I prefer the button just to be safe, but whatever. I will show you how to do it in the extended cut for the members. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos. Gold members get access to download these videos, download the database, and the code vault where all the code is stored. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full length courses found on my website, not just for access too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, 
These free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like level one, level two is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website, and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.